what does work is a rigorous definition for fractions, one that, unlike a pizza analogy, can be applied to any fraction the student might encounter. It goes like this. Fractions are the following collection of points on the number line. Fix a non-zero whole number n, divide the unit segment 0 to 1 into n segments of equal length. The division point next to 0 we denote by 1 over n. Take all multiples of 1 over n and denote them successively by 0 over n, 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, and so on. But just in case, the nth multiple is denoted m over n for all whole numbers m. As m runs through 1, 2, 3, etc., this infinite collection of sequences is what we call the fractions. Are elementary school students ready for that kind of abstraction? I think one of the main conclusion of the National Math Mathematics Panel Report is um, they found that kids, when you teach them appropriately, they're capable of much more abstraction than you ever thought possible. A very interesting clip that also raises points for discussion, obviously. Uh, let me begin with you, Bertram, and ask about this issue that Wu ends with, that children are more ready than we think uh, for an abstract approach to learning fractions by using the number line. Before you became a principal, uh, you were a mathematics teacher and a specialist. What's been your experience? Well, I, I agree with Dr. Wu that as appropriate, students should be taught the concepts of, of fractions. We need to have the precise concepts of vocabulary, precise um, language being used. And it, I think it's not too early for students to get the concept, the right words of what, it, what is being described in a fraction. What is the whole? What is the unit being measured? Um, as students move from concrete, move into pictorial representations. And I think students need to get a variety of models, see a variety of fractions in different ways. Uh, the set is, a, is one model of fractions. A whole, what is the whole being measured? And as students move to those varied and different representations, they develop the concepts of what fractions really mean. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Bertram. Now, turning to Skip, uh, in addition to your teaching and writing, You've played leadership roles with the Research Council for Mathematics Learning, the, National, the U.S. National Commission for Mathematics Instruction, and the Association for Mathematics Teacher Educators. So I need to ask you the same question. How much abstraction is the right amount? Uh, Abner, I'm not sure that the question is necessarily abstraction, as it might be, do children have the sort of background to do that mathematics? Mm -hmm. One of the analogies I like to use is that the, the sort of stereotypical classroom teacher in this country does a lot of developmental work with whole numbers. Uh, they use manipulative materials, they use money, they use food elements, so forth, to, to, to provide a context, a metaphor, if you will, uh, to make numbers make sense to kids work with place value and so forth. We don't do nearly that kind of groundwork with fractions as we should. Uh, we, we move too quickly, in my opinion, to adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions without seeing a variety of representations as both Bertram uh, just discussed and, and what Wu showed on the tape. So I don't think it's so much an issue of abstractions ha as having the prior background to, to allow them to connect with that abstraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Skip. Sure. I want to thank our audience, too, because questions have been pouring in since we first offered registration. And this is a good time to go to the webcast launch page and ask our panelists, um, to ask our panelists, what is on your mind? But first, I want to share a couple of the early questions that we have already received. Uh, Karen, um, we got several questions related to this issue, and Skip, brought it up just a moment ago, this issue, uh, and I'm going to read what, what, what they wrote, a deeper conceptual understanding of fractions, uh, as a viewer from Charleston, West Virginia, uh, wrote in. How does a school district like Montgomery County Public Schools ensure that, a kind, that, that kind of deep conceptual knowledge? 
I think one of the most important things, Abner, is to start where the teachers are because most of our teachers have had the same kind of experiences in school that Professor Wu describes as not being conducive to their understanding fractions deeply. So starting where the teachers are and helping them to grow through looking at the different models, the different representations, developing the precise vocabulary that they need and practicing using that. Now doing that in a school system in these constrained budget times that we have is often challenging and I think that some of the resources that are now available on the web are helpful to teachers and to school systems throughout the country because it's something that everyone can access and as you said either from their own homes or in school situations where they can do a teacher study. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks Karen. And from a pre-service side, Skip, what should colleges like McDaniel where I know you teach, be doing with soon to be elementary school teachers? Well, this is a really big challenge and it's, and it's a historic challenge. Uh, there have been a number of reports um, that talks about the, the relative lack of mathematics preparation for the would-be elementary classroom teacher in particular and to a lesser extent the middle grade classroom teacher. The fact is, having taught these mathematics courses and pedagogical courses for a long time, as you can probably <laughs> observe, um, the, we need to spend more time on these things called rational numbers. And by the way, I don't, I don't want this discussion to be solely A over B, two over three kinds of rational numbers as, as was, was depicted. And I know our work in the panel was as we would uh, collaborate would, would if, if he were here, would say that it's, it's not just fractions as we think about fractions stereotypically, it's also fractions as we represent them as decimals. It's also working with percent. It's mm -hmm. also leading to ratio and proportion as really big, big building blocks to higher level mathematics as, as he indicated in the tape and especially this thing called, we call algebra. So we need the collective we in teacher education at the pre-service level, at the professional development level really need to recognize this. I see this every time I teach a course. I see this in terms of students not having the sort of, if I can use the phrase number sense, to sort of think about fractions flexibly, flexibly to think about that as a decimal, as, as a percent, as a fraction being able able to compare fractions, all those kinds of really uh, important mathematical uh, touchstones for higher level mathematics. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to that decimals and fraction piece later on too. It would be good for us to talk yeah. some more yeah. about that. Yeah. So Great. thanks everyone. Uh, and before we move on to our next pre tip segment, I want to encourage our audience to go to the webcast launch page and answer the first polling question on the screen's left side. In this question we ask, for those that work in school buildings, and at school districts, what is your district or school doing to ensure that students learn fractions more completely? Answer number one, training teachers on using the number line to teach fractions. Two, hiring and training mathematics specialists to teach mathematics. Answer three, revising the district's curriculum in this area. Four, reviewing and potentially changing materials that have been used to teach math fractions. Five, moving the teaching of fractions to a different grade level. Six, nothing at the moment, since fractions are already well taught and well learned. And seven, nothing at the moment, we've not fully digested the full math panel report. And lastly, eight, we're doing something other than the above. While everyone's working on that question, let's take a trip to Georgia to watch a mathematics class taught by Patty Huberty at Colbert Elementary School and talk with Patty's colleague, the head of the Department of Mathematics and Science Education at the University of Georgia in Athens, Dr. Denise Mewborn. 